In the second part of the analysis of the season 1 finale of the show From, we'll explore some of the easter eggs that seem to be interconnected with each other, and how some of these clues may have foreshadowed the events that unfolded this season. Kenny's Book The book that Kenny had been reading throughout the season seems to be titled The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket, written by Edgar Allan Poe. Now, this clue seems to be more connected with the overall theme of the show than one may think. The book covers the themes of exploration, self-discovery, and human savagery through the story of a young man named Arthur Gordon Pym, who, along with his dog Tiger and his best friend Augustus, decides to secretly embark on an adventure at sea. This adventure eventually led the main character to face multiple horrors such as mutiny and cannibalism, and even an encounter with the supposed entrance to the center of the Earth at the south pole of the planet. Alan Paul included references to the Hollow Earth theory in his book, a theory that states that there are inhabitable spaces within the Earth where other civilizations or life could exist, very similar to Jules Verne's journey to the center of the Earth. In his book, Paul may have used this as a metaphor for self-discovery or inner exploration. The concept of the Hollow Earth is also a very popular one within science fiction. In the first part of this analysis, I cover coordinates number 1 and number 4 from the map at the police station. The second set of coordinates on the list happens to fall somewhere in the middle of the South Atlantic Ocean, and the closest land masses to these coordinate ranges are a small group of volcanic islands that include Nightingale Island. This group of uninhabited islands is commonly used for scientific research, and interestingly, some of these islands are alluded to in Alan Poe's book The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket. Now, even though this may be a coincidence, it is part of the purpose of this video to illustrate how deliberate the producers of From are when embedding background details into the show and I hope this may pave the way for new theories about the series. The Travel Map and the Lighthouses Before breaking down these clues, I wanted to first point out that the producers of the show indicated that the town was completely built from scratch in what was otherwise the middle of nowhere near Halifax, Nova Scotia, and every little detail in the environment of the town, from the character's clothing and accessories to wallpapers, was deliberately crafted and customized to meaningfully fit the story of the show. With that in mind, it is very likely that the this travel map, a centerpiece of almost every episode in the show, was also custom made to provide us with clues about the show. We can observe that when flipping it upside down, we can find references about lighthouses and different coasts. The text seems to say the following. The heading reads, from coast to beautiful coast, followed by, did you know? Boston is home to 14 lighthouses alone, all beautiful and waiting for you to visit. The Boston Light is the second oldest lighthouse in all of the United States. Upon doing research, it turns out that there seem to be 14 lighthouses in the vicinity of Boston, and Boston Lighthouse is currently considered the oldest one in the nation. However, during the period of colonial America, back in 1746, the second oldest lighthouse was Brand Point Light, located on the island of Nantucket, which is also part of the state of Massachusetts. In Edgar Allan Poe's book, the main character, a young man named Arthur Gordon Pym, was born on the island of Nantucket. We can also see that the version of the book being read by Kenny has a lighthouse on its cover, which seems to be a very limited edition or a customized print of the book. One could argue that these curiously interconnected pieces of information follow the same pattern we've seen with Ethan's books, which seem to parallel different aspects and events of the town. It is as if the town itself was built as a collective projection of different materials and ideas from the very own residents of the town, like some type of group simulation. What's happening? This is the land of dreams, Fran. It could be almost anything. I believe that the latter is still one of the best explanations for why the town is almost like a scrapbook of different items, places, and even people. And this is probably perfectly and absurdly illustrated by the presence of a motel pool but not actual motel. At this time, there is only so much information we can read and make sense of from this map. And there is a possibility that a lot of these clues will be better contextualized in the seasons to come. This is noting that a lot of the clues I observed and discarded earlier in the season were later contextualized in the show, and this brings us to the following chapter. The newspapers. The newspapers that appear in the intro of each episode seem to reference the period of the American Civil War, 
the mid to late 1800s, foreshadowing some of the later references we saw about the Civil War from the very first episode of the show. I was able to identify the original print of the newspaper that appears on the intro of each episode. The paper seems to come from a South Carolina press and was printed in August of 1884, about two decades after the American Civil War. The paper references the Civil War as well as events that eventually led to the death of the Russian Tsar Alexander II at the hands of the nihilist movement in Russia. An interesting piece of history is that Alexander II also supported the Union during the American Civil War and had abolished serfdom or forced labor in Russia before the United States was able to abolish slavery. The paper also references multiple tragedies that took place during the time, including a column on the deadly spread of cholera throughout France. We should note that in my previous analysis, I explained multiple other clues in the show that connect to France, including Jade's comments about his grandmother. One article that caught my attention on this same page was titled Stories of Vampires which talks about alleged reports of vampirism documented by a physician. The physician stated that one of his patients had the superstitious belief that a vampire was visiting him at night to suck the blood from one of his ankles. Additionally, the patient believed that the vampire was an old enemy who was deceased. The physician dismissed the patient's superstitions and sent him home, but the patient was never to be seen again after that. The physician further added that the patient was a native of Hungary, and such superstitions are common there. The latter reminded me of my previous analysis of the cave drawings made by the monsters, where I explained that the symbols used by the monsters match the old Hungarian runic script, and that the monsters more closely resemble the Drauk or Scandinavian zombie, which is technically a type of vampire in the mythology. The same newspaper article goes in depth, stating that physicians were divided about the alleged reports of vampires and werewolves, and that there must be some type of scientific foundation for them. The article highlights how accounts of vampirism date back millennia, referencing the Greek myth of Lamia, a serpent-like demon who will devour children and seduce men with her beauty before devouring them as well. Which I think also paralleled my analysis of the monster Jasmine during episode number 7, and how there seem to be aspects of the mythological snake as seductresses and hypnotizers that can be seen in the monsters. Additionally, the article states how some of the most notable reports of vampirism originate from France, citing the story of the Marshal Gaël de Reyes, who was charged and hung for the kidnapping and killing of approximately 200 children, even though the race confessed to having had at least 800 victims and having eaten several of them. The second newspaper from the show's intro appears to have been printed around July of 1920, two years after World War I, and the year that the Red Army succeeded in the Russian Civil War. As much as can be seen so far, the dates of the newspaper seem to range from the mid-1800s to the early 1900s. One of the newspapers used by Victor also seems to have been printed around 1920. We can see an advertisement for Bell Ann's indigestion pills in one of the newspapers used by Victor. Bell Ann's were popular pills for indigestion during the late 1800s and beyond. The pills were developed by a chemist named Bell and Joel Lanfear Dodge, who was the son of a surgeon who served for the Union during the American Civil War. At this time, and based on all the available clues, it seems that the theme of war, specifically of the American Civil War, is central to the story of the show. It also seems that the producers may have creatively adapted real historical events and reports into the show's story. And the producers have definitely made an effort to allude to this throughout the show. An example of this is the notorious bell that Boyd rings at the beginning of episode number one, which happens to match the classic school bell that was used during the period of the American Civil War. Another subtle background detail that is consistent with the time period can be found back at Colony House, where one of the design patterns we can see on the chimney is the clamshell or seashell design. Clamshell designs are still popular in modern furniture design, but were most popular during the mid-1800s and famously added to the rifle powder flask used during the American Civil War, among many other military items. The clamshell design was partly so popular due to its spiritual and religious meaning as a symbol of hope, strength, and salvation. The clamshell is also viewed as a charm to ward off evil spirits. In Catholic tradition, the scallop shell is considered a holy symbol for Saint James, the patron saint of Spain, and in mythology, the scallop shell is also associated with sea deities and the goddesses of fertility from Celtic mythology and Hindu Hinduism. The clamshell or scallop shell has also been used as a symbol of divine conception and can be seen in multiple depictions of the Virgin Mary. With all this said, the amount of detail that the producers of From seem to have embedded into the show is simply exhausting and overwhelming, and we are still likely on the top side of the iceberg. This is considering that a more detailed analysis may reveal that other items in the show may reference the Civil War period or something else. Time in a bottle. This is a brief thought. 
I keep thinking about the scene where Boyd and Sarah found the hanging bottles in the forest, and Boyd later discovered that the bottles seem to have written years within them, one of them being 1864, the year of the American Civil War, and I couldn't help but think of the lyrics of Gene Crutch's song, Time in a Bottle, where he touches on the theme of human mortality and how there never seems to be enough time to enjoy the things you love or to be with the ones you love, wishing he could save every day in a bottle for all eternity. In the case of the bottles we saw with the dates during episode number 9, it seems that it is not the moments of joy but pain and trauma that are being captured. This is in line with the previous analysis that the town acts as a type of magnet that attracts people who are burdened by pain and trauma, as if the town is feeding on it, something that Boyd himself alluded to in episode number 10. The topic of time and how we value it or treasure it seems to be another key message in From. This is also revisited by the poem that hangs on the wall of the diner, Forever is Composed of Nows by Emily Dickinson, which talks about how eternity is just an infinite collection of moments or instances, with each moment being different from one another, like different locations or coordinates start to a map, but time itself being a single infinite landscape. We also know that there is a science fiction aspect to the show, and I'm curious to know where the producers will go with these concepts about time in the coming seasons. I wanted to say that I have truly been loving analyzing the show and creating these videos, as well as interacting with you. As I was working on and off on finishing this analysis, I ended up with well over 30 minutes of content. I will be releasing the remaining part of this analysis and more this week. In the meantime, please feel free to share your thoughts and questions in the comment section, since I'll also be working on a dedicated video based on your questions. If you would like to stay tuned with further analysis and interpretations of the show, please make sure to press the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell.